All right, today we're going to be talking about the Brooks Glycerin Max. It's a good, good. For the record, I am not affiliated with Brooks or any other running shoe company at all. I bought these with my own money out of pure curiosity to know if these are worth the hype. So without further ado, let's jump into it. This is my second pair of Brooks. I have run in a pair of Brooks Ghosts, but that was a long time ago. I don't even know which version it was, but Brooks are known for their Glycerin line, which this is kind of a part of, and their Ghost line. and this is their first attempt at making a max cushion shoe from the glycerin line and so i don't know if this is like version one if they're going to continue this but all i know is that the glycerin line is award-winning and this is their max version of that shoe and it is forty dollars more coming in at two hundred dollars and so my goal today is to help you decide whether or not these shoes are right for you and especially if they're worth the extra 40 bucks compared to the normal glycerin shoes and so let's just jump into the fit and sizing. In terms of sizing, I am a size nine. I ordered a size nine in these and they fit perfectly in terms of length. In terms of fit, they are wider in the toe box. They're not quite an ultra or a topo with the wide toe box, but um, they're not narrow. Let's just put it that way. I think they're on the wider end of average. So if you're looking for a more narrow shoe, I would not go with these, um, but I enjoyed a little bit of roominess in the toe box and then I'll talk more about the heel later, but it was also roomy in the heel, but I think that has more to do with the upper. So I'm gonna wait for a little bit and we'll talk about the upper later. So let's move on to the weight. The weight of this shoe is 10.7, no, 10.9 ounces, which is heavy for road shoes. Road shoes generally tend to come in closer to like the low nines. And so you're almost two ounces more than an average road shoe. And so, you know, Take that into consideration if you're looking for a fast race, a fast and light race shoe, these might not be the ones for you. But if you're looking for a maximal shoe, this could be the shoe for you. So let's jump into the outsole here. With the outsole, I was actually super impressed with what's going on here. The amount of rubber seems to be absolutely perfect. The thickness seems to be perfect. And I say that because I have close to 75 miles on these shoes. I wanna say, I wanna say I'm, I'm somewhere between 65 and 70 miles in these shoes and I cannot see basically any wear and tear on these shoes. Like I am blown away with how little wear and tear I am seeing. It's truly remarkable. Like the outsole to me, it's obvious that it's built to last. Like I would expect the outsole to last well into six, seven, 800 miles. And that's, that's saying something. I think these shoes, the outsole on these shoes is built to last. Now let's move up a little bit into the midsole. And this is where these shoes start to shine. And they should. That's what they were going for here is making a maximal cushion shoe. And they're maximal. Like they're in the heel. The heel stack height is 47 millimeters, which is a lot. And then 41 in the front, giving you a six millimeter drop. And you know, my entire life, I've had the goal of being 5'10". And these almost got me there. <laughs> Like that is a lot of cushion. I actually really like this cushion. And if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm very skeptical and critical of maximal cushion shoes because they get clunky and they feel funny on your, on your feet. And these were actually fantastic. Brooks has created this DNA tuned uh, midsole here, which is this nitrogen infused foam. And it's pretty rigid, like you bend this and it takes a lot of pressure to, to bend it. And then it pushes back, like it has, it has some rebound. And I think that together with their glide roll technology, I don't really know what that is, but I think it works because the energy return is fantastic in these. Like they, I think they make up for any weight and any, you know, bulkiness, even though they don't feel bulky at all but you just get incredible energy return. And these are incredibly comfortable. Like the top layer feels like it's made out of some sort of memory foam. Like you put your foot in it and it just sinks in just ever so slightly. And it feels like it just feels really comfortable on your feet. 
but a lot of, a problem with a lot of these shoes is like when they when you sink into them like that it's like you're running on pillows after that like you don't get the return but you get the return from these and i think it's because you know after that first layer if there are layers it just feels like there are i'm not saying there are layers but it feels like there's a layer and then rigidity right below that but not too rigid like it's just enough that you're getting some energy return and i think it's that nitrogen infused foam in there that's that's pretty rigid all i know is that these are incredibly comfortable and you get good energy return and so whatever kind of innovation and research that Brooks put into this midsole, I think it's a home run. Like I, I am very impressed with this shoe in terms of its midsole. But, and there is a but, let's move into the upper here. And this is where I started to have some serious issues. I think the upper is incredibly overbuilt. Like there's just too much material, too much going on. And let's start with this massive logo that is a chunk of rubber like that that to me I mean you could have saved yourself almost half an ounce by just removing that rubber and doing it out of stitching instead like I just don't understand that like and you can kind of feel it when you're when you're running because the entire upper itself has very little um, breathability I got my feet got very warm in these shoes and it's fall it's all it's basically winter here like my runs in the morning are 32 degrees or below and so we're below freezing at that point and I still got hot feet in these shoes because and, and usually in the winter when you're running you can feel the cold wind on your feet if your shoes have good breathability and I just I very rarely felt any breathability at all in the upper and that's a that's a pretty big issue I wouldn't say it's like a deal breaker but I just don't like getting hot feet and then moving on to the rest of the upper I mentioned earlier that I was I was gonna cover some of the fit in the heel when I talked about the upper. And so the heel cup back here, it's kind of shallow and there's a lot of room. And if you look inside, there's, there's quite a bit of material around the top. And so when you go to try and get a secure fit, you're really just kind of like cinching around the top of your ankle and your heel continues to stay a little bit loose and it moves and it, it just doesn't feel great. It doesn't feel secure. I hope that makes sense. And that's kind of a, it's not, once again, it's not a deal breaker here. All I'm saying is I got a little frustrated with the upper. Like they have this beautiful brand new midsole with amazing technology with a lot of cushion. And then they kind of just went overboard on the whole upper, the material, everything about it, it just seems overdone. So once again, I don't think there are any deal breakers here, but I'm just providing my honest feedback that the upper missed the mark for me. But anyways, let's move on to the, the most subjective part of the review, which is the looks. If you've ever watched my channel, you know how critical I am of maximal ru uh, cushion running shoes. I hate them. I think they're ugly. These are actually pretty decent looking. I mean, they do look like boats in many ways, especially on the inside, but you know, most people don't see the inside of a running shoe. But on the outside, this out, outer side, not the inside, but the outside, this side of the shoe looks pretty good. And I like the colors. So I'm a big fan of white running shoes, but white running shoes almost immediately get gross. And the they show dirt very well they show all the scuff marks and all the stuff from asphalt with this off-white it's almost like a really really light gray it hides the the dirtiness very well and so they still look kind of white when you're running even though they're kind of like a light gray anyways all i'm trying to say is i really like the look of these um i mean like i said i have close to 70 miles somewhere around 70 miles in these shoes and they still look almost new in every way from the outsole to the upper, like they did a really good job on looks, I think. So anyways, let's, let's move on to my overall summary and thoughts on this shoe. If you watched my channel before, you know that what I'm looking for in running shoes is a shoe that feels like an, a natural extension of my foot. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to worry about it. I don't even want to notice that the shoes are there other than that they're helping me run comfortably. And the cushion on these shoes were absolutely fantastic. Like I can't say enough good 
about the cushion. Blown away, hands down, one of the best maximal cushioning shoes on the market. If you're looking for something because you have knee pain, hip pain, back pain, any sort of joint pain from running, but you don't wanna miss out on the energy return, home run right here. But like I said, I have two main issues with the upper and that's the lack of breathability and the lack of security and whatever they've got going on here in the heel cup. But if you have bigger feet, and when I say bigger feet, I mean wider and you don't mind kind of a bigger area in the heel and you don't mind the lack of breathability, then these could be a great shoe for you. And like I said, these aren't, those aren't deal breakers. Like these, these shoes will continue to get miles from me. I'm going to continue to run in these because how much I loved the, the cushion and the comfort in these. They are so comfortable and you don't miss out on energy return, which is fantastic. So anyways, I hope that was interesting and helpful when you're looking at the shoe and trying to decide whether or not it's the right shoe for you and whether it's worth $200. So if that was helpful, subscribe to my channel, stick around, and I'll catch you in the next video.